This lecture will cover the online lecture, and I want to go over the different techniques and tools you can use to produce lecture material for your courses, and also some of the things to consider before you begin to produce lecture materials for your courses. There are a number of ways to produce online lectures, a number of lecture modes and lecturing styles. This lecture you're watching now is produced on my Mac laptop, and I'm just using iMovie and the iSight camera. You can also capture video on your mobile device. Simple, straightforward, easy to upload to iMovie. As I go over these modes, I'll try to point out their strengths and weaknesses. But bear in mind that every course and every instructor, and indeed every course module, has a different set of requirements. So a composition course may not benefit from the same set of practices as an art history or animation course. And there's a number of factors to consider. First, the students. Are they undergraduate or graduate? Are they on campus or off campus? What kind of course is it? Is it studio or theory? Introductory or advanced? Is the emphasis on writing or art practice? Blended or 100% online? Think about the course material. Will a given lecture respond to a set of readings? Will it interpret a set of images? or discuss a specific place. Is this a one-off talk, or is this a lecture you'll use term after term? And then there's you, the instructor. How comfortable are you in front of the camera? How intimate would you like to be? How spontaneous? What kinds of connections do you want to make with your students? Keep in mind that your dynamic style in a large lecture hall may not translate well to the intimacy of something like an audio podcast. Think about your video production skills. How much time do you want to spend editing and producing? I can't say what will work best for you. I can't say what will work best for your class. You'll have to decide what tools and style you wish to deploy in your online classes based on the course content, on your students, and what works for your own teaching style and your own sensibilities. What I can do here is demonstrate the different modes, share some tools with you so that you can pick and choose the appropriate tool and the appropriate mode. So to begin with, the easiest thing to do is make an audio recording of your classroom lectures. Attach a mic to your laptop, bring in one of these, upload the audio to Moodle. It's very simple and very straightforward. However, I've listened to hours and hours of classroom lectures and I can tell you from experience that they are mind-numbingly boring. They're very difficult to follow, and one is very easily distracted. A classroom audio recording is an excellent way for students to catch up on missed lectures. It's a great way for students to study for an exam, but without the actual classroom experience to back it up, you'll find that classroom audio recordings are really alienating for students. My lectures at SFU are all recorded, but few students listen to them and they would bring little to 100% online class. And frankly, I think students would feel ripped off if you were to simply record the classroom experience and offer them that. A video recording of the classroom is a lot better. And it can give online students an approximation of the classroom experience. It is, however, important to remember that the modalities of the face-to-face -face class built around the public lecture is very, very different than the online experience. Furthermore, it's difficult to translate across media. It's difficult to capture the live experience on video. And something is always lost in that translation. And if we look at things from the student perspective, if all an online student gets is a second-hand classroom lecture, they will feel cheated and resentful. An online student pays the same fees, and yet they would not receive something that is uniquely theirs. What the classroom or lecture theater offers is a dynamic and spontaneous exchange. And those advantages cannot be duplicated online. But online learning does have its own advantages, and that is its intimacy and its sense of connectedness. And studies demonstrate that the more innovative instructors are, the more opportunities for students to interact and feel connected, and if students understand what is expected of them, the more they'll participate, the more they'll learn, and the more they'll succeed in our courses. 
it's that sense of one-on-one -on -one intimacy with the instructor and a sense of connectedness to other students and the course as a whole that sets online learning apart from the classroom experience. So you need to consider adopting a lecture mode and style that takes advantage of the strengths of online learning. Let's look at a great example of an online lecture. And this is Sam Carter's Pacific Rim Design course. Look at the way he uses the video to create a sense of place and space. Hi, welcome to this week's lecture on gardens. I'm very pleased to be here at the Dr. Sen Yat-sen Garden in Vancouver. This was established here just before Expo 86, when teams of people from China brought materials, uh, everything that you see here pretty much from China, and built this great, wonderful, largest garden, uh, traditional, uh, authentic uh, Chinese garden outside of China. This lecture has been an example of a very straightforward, very easy to produce, talking heads video. And I want to give you some other tools and other methods for producing online lectures.